Sometimes the time series data you have contain both linear trend and seasonality. So we want to detect such patterns and incorporate them in our forecasts. For example, here's some sales data of smartphones for a particular manufacturer. It's quarterly data over four years. First, let's try plotting this. So we're going to create a line chart. So we select from the heading Y down to the end, and then insert line chart. I want the one with the dots. There it is. Let's label everything. We could see that there is some upward trend here. Also in each year, there is a, a seasonality. There are some patterns. Looking at the first year, the pattern is that sales decreases going from the first quarter to the second quarter. And then it goes up and then up. Now the second year, it's down, down, up, up. And the third year, down, down, up, up. Fourth year, down, down, up, up. It's a similar pattern every year. So we can see that in each year, the fourth quarter has the highest demand. Like here, there, there, these are all by the fourth quarter. And then the lowest demand, uh, where is that? Uh, which quarter? Uh, it's in the second quarter, right? So here's second, one, two, three, four, one, two. Uh, so the lowest points are at the uh, second quarter. Well, does it make sense? Does it make sense that the demand would be the highest in the fourth quarter every year? Well, sure. The fourth quarter in the calendar year is October, November, December. That includes the holiday season. So it makes sense that sales in smartphones will peak uh, then. Uh, people buying new smartphones as gifts for their family members and people taking advantage of great sales during the season to upgrade their phone. Many other products experience a peak demand during the holiday season. So the regression model is something like forecasted sales is equal to intercept plus some coefficient times the time uh, period uh, plus another coefficient times the quarter. Now the time period we could fill in this column. So we're going to start at 1 uh, and then go down to the end. So that's uh, 16 time periods. Now remember with the regression models, all the independent variables need to be quantitative. Now the time period certainly is uh, quantitative. It is a measure of how much time has elapsed from the beginning time of these sales data. Now the quarter variable looks quantitative because uh, it's represented by 1, 2, 3, and 4, but I would say it is not quantitative. You know, the quarter in this context represents the season, the time of the year. Quarter numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 are just the way these seasons are coded. They may be numbers, but they don't represent meaningful quantities. We could have called them something else like you know, spring, summer, fall, and winter, or we could have said quarter A, quarter B, quarter C, quarter D. So the quarter variable is a categorical variable. Now to include a categorical variable in a regression model, we really have to do something. We need to replace it with a set of dummy variables. This means for each category of the quarter variable, you know, one, two, three, or four, we create a dummy variable which could take on only the value of zero or one. So one means yes, zero means no. Such dummy variables uh, have the properties of quantitative variables, so they can be used in a regression model. Specifically, the dummy variables are defined like this. Q1 is equal to 1 if the time period t corresponds to quarter 1, otherwise it's 0. q2 is 1 if we're in quarter 2, otherwise it's 0. So let me make that more concrete by entering the 
uh, appropriate values here. So we got a column dedicated to each dummy variable. Year 1, quarter 1. So here, quarter is 1. So Q1 corresponding to quarter 1 gets a 1. Means yes. Yes, we're in quarter 1. And then the other dummy variables get 0. Uh, saying we're not in quarter 2, so it's a 0. We're not in quarter 3, so that's a 0. Now you might say, what about the dummy variable for quarter 4? Oh, okay. We are not going to need it, but uh, for now, let me put it in. And then I'll explain later why we don't need it. So quarter 4, let's put a 0 there. Okay, a second row, quarter 2. Uh, that means we're in quarter 2 in this row, so dummy variable Q2 gets a 1. And the other variables get 0. Quarter 3, we assign 1 to Q3 and 0 for the others. Quarter 4, quarter 4, dummy variable Q4 gets a 1 and then the others get 0. And then we could just copy this whole thing and paste into the other years. Paste, paste, and then paste. Now we use the dummy variables in place of the quarter variable uh, here. So our regression model will have this format. Let me write that down. So forecast sales it will be something like this. Dummy variables here. B1 times Q1, B2 times Q2, plus B3 times Q3, plus B4 times Q4, and then plus B5 times time, uh, let's just call it little t, uh, and no quarter variable. Now, let me explain why we don't actually need this uh, dummy variable Q4. Okay, suppose I show you only these columns, Q1 through Q3. Can you figure out the correct value of Q4 in each row? So let's see, just take a look at this. Q1 is 1, Q2 and Q3 are 0. Well, then Q4 must be equal to 0. Because you know that only one dummy variable's value is 1 and the others are 0 in each row. So if any of the other variables, like this, is 1, then you know that Q4's value must be 0. Now, if all the other variables are equal to 0, then you know that the Q4's value must be 1. Since we could figure out Q4's value, if we know the values of the other dummy variables, it is redundant to include the Q4 in the regression model. Now that I hopefully convinced you why we don't need this column Q4, I'm going to delete it and then delete that term from this expression. So we use only three dummy variables for the quarters 1, 2, and 3, and then quarter 4 could be a reference category where all the dummy variables are equal to 0. So here is the regression model that I already showed you before. And now we just need to find this intercept and the corresponding regression coefficients. Okay, let's run some regression analysis. We go to data, data analysis, and then regression. Okay, so Y range, that should be the sales given, so include the, the header and then control shift down arrow to include the entire data range and then the X range let's include these guys 
the four columns of data, Q1, Q2, Q3, and time. So these, remember, are, the, are independent variables. And make sure the labels is checked off. And then output range, what I do is just for convenience, I'm going to put the result uh, here on the same sheet, somewhere over here. And then say OK. So here is our result. Maybe um, clean it up a little bit. Okay, so the important part is the coefficients column, right, over here. So these are going to be, so that's your intercept is uh, B sub 0, B1, B2, B3, and then B4. So the regression model is here. 6.069 minus 1.363 times Q1 minus 2.034 times Q2 minus 0.304 times Q3 and plus 0.146 times t.